In this presentation, what we're going to do is we are going to look at correlation coefficients. Now, what I'm going to do here is use a fairly famous data set called Anscom. Okay. Now, this, this is, you get it anywhere. So, essentially, what we're going to look at is correlation coefficients. Okay. Now, usually, this data set is uh, discussed in the context of data visualization. So, uh, Correlation is mentioned in this data set, so when you usually analyze this data set, but I'm going to focus on the sort of secondary aspect of it for this video, the correlation coefficients. Now, um, what we're going to do here is we are first off going to look at um, the, we're going to sort of concentrate on the y variables. We have eight variables altogether, y1, y2, y3, y4, okay, and x1, x2, x3, x4, but you notice that x1, x2, x3, x4, uh, some cases we have the same data, uh, they're, they're exactly the same, so we're not that pushed about them. y1, y2, y3, y4, a bit more realistic, they're a bit more, that's what real data sort of looks like, essentially. So we're going to sort of concentrate on y1, y2, y3, y4. Now you might also notice that we only have 11 uh, observations uh, in each sample or each data set, so it's a very small sample. Anyway, let's kick off. So what we're going to hear we do is we go to stat, basic statistics, and we do go down to correlation. So stat, basic statistics, correlation, and correlation measures the strength and direction of a positive of a linear relationship. Now, just actually sort of worth mentioning. It actually assumes on advance that you've already checked that if it is a linear relationship and not something else, okay? Anyway, correlation. So, there I have them selected, y1, y2, y3, y4. What I'm going to do here is uh, select Pearson, and I'm just going to unselect display p-values. We'll come back to that shortly. There we go. The, this is our little correlation matrix. Now, it's a sort of, uh, this is a correlation matrix. Now, it's a sort of only partial output from a correlation matrix. It just sort of cuts out a lot of the redundant data. Uh, and a lot of uh, other outputs you might get um, uh, the correlation of a variable with itself, which is always going to be one. So just in this case what happens here is that it just sort of cuts down to the bare minimum uh, output. Now here we can see that the correlation coefficient for is estimated for y1 and y2 as 0 0.750. Similarly, for y1 and y3, 0.469, uh, y3 and y2, or y2 and y3, 0.588. Now, there's a, there's also some negative ones there. Uh, y1 and y4, minus 0.489, uh, y4 and y2, minus 0.478, and y4 and y3, minus 0.155. Essentially, the numbers there are going to, always going to be between minus 1 and 1. Now, one means a, a positive number there, for example, the first three, essentially means that there's a positive linear relationship of some sort. Uh, we would sort of say that Y1 and Y2 is strong, and Y1 and Y3 is mildly strong, or mild, positive. Um, and we might say that Y1 and Y4 is mildly negative, and what, likewise Y2 and Y4 mildly negative. Uh, Y3 is very... It's a sort of a no, uh, no. It's not really. There's not much correlation at all between uh, y3 and y4 at all. Okay, so that's good. Now, what we can do here is essentially what you have to do is learn how to interpret those. Okay, and that's not really part of this exercise. It's straightforward enough exercise, but not really what we need to do here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to basic statistics and I'm going to add in the significance values there. This. Now essentially what we have here is, so essentially the first thing we have is the Pearson correlation coefficient, and then we have a p-value for the um, hypothesis test. The, and that's the sort of the same in each case. Now essentially what you have to determine here, are these p-values big or small, okay? And if they are small, we reject the null hypothesis. If they are big, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? So it's either 0.05 or 0.025 or something like that. So just check what threshold you're using. Now, um, the in this case, what we have here is the null hypothesis is that the true correlation coefficient between y1, let's just go back up there, y1 and y2, is the, the null hypothesis is that that is the, for the um, overall population and not just the sample of 11, that the true correlation coefficient is zero. 
Now, according to this p-value here, essentially what we do is reject that null hypothesis because this is a really low p-value. Okay. In all the other cases, we fail to reject that the null hypothesis that the true correlation coefficient is zero. Remember, this are what we have there. All of these is just estimates based on eleven items. Okay. So we have a very small data set. So if we can't reject the null hypothesis that the true correlation is uh, uh, zero, okay? There's not enough evidence to say it's not zero yet, because partly because like 11, uh, basing, basing, it on, uh, the, uh, basing our analysis in 11 cases is not great. Okay, so um, that's a little bit of a hypothesis testing, and that's just like, you know, essentially what you do there is interpret that p-value. So they are all the p-values there, so those are all the, uh, the correlation coefficients, and those are the corresponding p-values there, and that's likewise the whole way up. What I'm going to do actually now is just to finish off is I'm going to go to uh, basic statistics, correlation, and essentially what I'm going to do here is just switch to Spearman row, and Spearman row is something that you would use in this in the case where the data is not normally distributed. So it's Spearman row is based on ranks, okay rather than the actual values, okay? Now, it's not considered as good, a, as powerful a test as the Pearson, but still quite handy. So essentially what we might get is contradictory results. And depending on the circumstances, if the data set is normally distributed or not, you know, you have to make a decision there what to do. Again, that's a bit outside um, what we have to do there. So here it is, uh, something very similar. We got the Spearman correlation coefficients and also the corresponding p-values. Now you might notice that some of the p-values that were small previously when we did it for Pearson are now, uh, or th that they were large previously are now small, okay? They're significant, as we sort of say. Okay, again, that's not a, a t uh, it's not a discussion about hypothesis testing. It's just really what buttons to press and what, what the output is. So I'm gonna leave it there. Is my friend. Hang on a second. Let's shut that down.